Hello everyone. In this short video, we will discuss about the radiographic appearance of fibrous dysplasia. This topic is very important for your exam preparation, so stay tuned. First, we will discuss about the location. Fibrous dysplasia involves the maxilla almost twice often as the mandible. It is an important differentiating point. In some cases, ossifying fibroma can be confused with fibrous dysplasia. But remember, ossifying fibroma is more common in mandible and fibrous dysplasia is more common in maxilla. FD most commonly involves the posterior region and it is commonly unilateral and very rarely bilateral. Now let's discuss about the periphery. Periphery of the lesion is most commonly ill-defined and blends imperceptibly with normal bone. If you see, other radiopaque lesions have a demarcated border. So this point is worth remembering. Periphery of the young lesions sometimes appears to be sharp and even corticated. Now internal structures. Density and trabecular pattern of the lesion vary considerably. Variation is more pronounced in mandible and more homogeneous in maxilla. Here you can see. The internal aspect of bone is of three types. More radiolucent than normal, less radiolucent than normal and mixture of these two lesions. The early lesions appear as a cyst-like radiolucency in the jaws. Sometimes it appears to have granular internal septa giving internal aspect a multilocular appearance. If you see the trabecular pattern, they are shortened, thinner, irregular shaped and more numerous than normal trabeculi. The altered trabeculi may give rise to various appearances like orange peel, ground glass, thumbprint and cottonwood. Simple bones like bone cavities are seen and occurs more commonly in mandibular lesions. Now let's discuss the effects on surrounding structures. Small lesion has no effect on surrounding structure. Fibrous dysplasia typically causes enlargement of the bone from within, which can cause a ribbon-like thinning of the cortex. Expansion of the bone is even along its length rather than the more concentric expansion seen with the benign tumors. Here you can see the vertical depth of the mandible is often increased. In the maxilla, the lesion encroaches the sinus usually from the lateral wall and last section of the sinus to be involved is the most posterior superior portion. Normal anatomic shape of the antrum is most often maintained which is a differentiating point with other tumor-like lesions. Superior displacement of the inferior alveolar nerve canal is another typical finding of FD. In case of other lesions, the canal usually displaced inferiorly. Now, lamina dura of the teeth in the affected areas of the bone becomes indistinct and pedial space may appear to be very narrow. FD can displace teeth and interfere with the normal eruption. And remember that root resorption is very rare in that case.